Boy, that turned out good. What's going on guys? Welcome back or to the channel. I appreciate you coming back. Um, we're gonna work on the 1LE some. I've really contemplated on where I wanna start with this thing as it does need some mechanical work. Uh, need some interior work, some body work, but uh, all aspects of the car are solid, just it all needs a little bit of love everywhere. Uh, I'm really busy with the, the two Nova builds, the uh, square body build, and I've got another build getting ready to start that I'll uh, get you guys up to speed with uh, here in probably a couple days to a week. Um, so I've got to really pick and choose when I can work on this, and I don't know if I'll ever have time to just devote all my time to this project. So uh, what I'm going to do is tackle small things to keep me motivated on it, uh, small parts to start and finish and bring you guys along with, you know, small restoration things that you might have on your third gen, um, kind of like a how-to videos on, on small things, whether it's these blisters or, or whatever. Um, so anyways, I'm going to start with some small stuff on this and uh, tackle things that eventually I'm going to have no choice but to tackle the paint on the whole car, but by then I'll have all the little pieces done and it'll just be kind of like a a week or two mad rush to, to get the car painted. So uh, on this episode here, I chose to start with this uh, grill here. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I got it to uh, where it was uh, from. It was pretty rough uh, to what it looks like now. So let's get going. These are usually a little torques, but by this time, as old as these cars are, they've been taken off before. This one, I don't think it's ever been off this car. It's got the actual torques, which I think are T15s. So let me grab those here. And it is, in fact, a T15. I've never seen, and I've had quite a few of these cars, I've never seen it where they still have these top screws in there. <laughs> so. Okay, so unfortunately in my case, somebody put a front tag bracket on this car and uh, put me three big holes right there in the center. So I'm gonna tackle those first before I can do anything else. And then we'll get on to sanding and prepping the rest of it for, for paint. These are getting pretty hard to come by from what I understand. So we're definitely gonna fix this one, but uh, it definitely needs some some love so first thing we'll do is i'm gonna wipe it down and uh clean it up a little bit with some uh prep all get some of the dirt and nastiness off of it then uh, i'm gonna show you how i do these uh this goes the same for this grill or any bumper that you might uh you know down the road want to fill some uh license plate holes or whatever on uh i i do the same thing with it so uh, with, with whether it be a bumper or, or this grill. So it will apply to this and whatever you want to do. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this wiped off and then I'll show you how uh, I'm gonna tackle fixing these holes to where they will not come back and show on you uh, later on after it's painted. All right, now we got it cleaned up. It's gonna be the next step. We'll fire up the compressor and I'll show you what we're gonna do to prep this back to get it ready for our first uh, basically fiberglass uh, on the back to make it strong. All right, so basically there was uh, kind of like embosses on the back from where the screw would go through to thread in for the old bracket. Uh, just for ease of doing this, I cut those off. It'd be weird to work around those. So I cut those off flush, and then I come in here with a roll lock disc and gave a bunch of tooth all the way around those holes. 
for whatever I put down next is going to bite into that plastic. Okay, I think he does. You see that? Okay. So now we're going to get on to that next step. I am going to throw some tape over this. Not that I don't think anything's going to come through, but if it did, I don't want it to yet. I want to. I don't want to make a mess on this other side. Like I said, you got to be real careful of this uh, this here. You could mess that up really quick. And then uh, from there, you'd almost have to either get rid of this grill, get you another one, or I guess you could shave that off there. I've done that too in the past, not with a bow tie grill. My first Camaro had the uh, had this grill, but it said Camaro in the center, and I never really cared for it. It said Camaro, so I shaved that off, and it was pretty pretty slick looking for that time, for the time period of that. So, all right. Okay, so the idea behind this here is I'm gonna use some kitty hair fiberglass reinforced filler on the back here, and then I'm gonna let it set up. Uh, it's actually about the end of the day here, end of the work day here, so I'm gonna come in tomorrow and finish the top side. But then I will do this exact same thing on the top side, and the idea is to get the fiberglass filler pushed down enough into these holes that whenever I go to the top side and I grind it back like this, then I'm actually into that filler to where then I can fill that top side as well. And the filler is through the hole uh, bonded to each other. And I've never ever had any, anything like this come back um, on anything I've done when, it, when you do it that way, when you can actually get the filler to meet through both pieces or, or through the piece and bond to each other. It just, I've never seen it fail that way. So uh, that's, that's how we're gonna do this one, just like I've done a ton of them. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, after that, we'll be able to get it sanded down and, and the fun stuff, the paint stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's get some uh, some glass on that. Okay, just like your body filler or any fillers, you want to make sure you get this stuff really mixed up. Now, this kitty hair can be a little bit of a pain. If you've ever worked with it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's kind of a pain because it's so stringy. So once I get it kind of mixed in, so what I'll do is I'll kind of start cutting at it a little bit. I don't know it sounds crazy, but it actually cuts up some of those hairs a little bit and makes it easier to uh, work with. You don't, you know, you don't want to find, you know, cut too fine anyways, because that's the strength is in the the long hair of it. So, um, you know, we don't want to, you know, get too too carried away. But some of these are just really knotted up, to where it makes it really tough to. To work it so yeah and this here needs to be all one uniform color it's really important here because we're going for strength here really kind of you know, that looks pretty good right there okay so what I'll do on that here is I'm aiming to put pressure and shove this down through that hole. And obviously I'm not too worried about what the back of this looks like. I might throw a quick sand on it, might not, I don't know. You won't ever see it once it's on the car anyways, but I probably will. But yeah, you wanna smash that in there. Really good. Pretty much like that there. Get some of that excess off there. Like I said, it don't really matter, but might as well over there. Smash it in there. Just kind of pull it out a little bit like that. Okay. Now, when this hardens up, this is going to be. Solid, solid. Anybody that's worked with this stuff knows how uh, how solid this stuff gets. So by doing it from the back like this, letting it really cure up, you, you wouldn't have to let it cure up overnight. The only reason I am is just because I'm getting out of here. So, um, but let it cure up for a while, and then we'll basically do this same thing on that on that top side, where the fiberglass can meet through the hole and bond not only to the plastic, but to it, it itself. 
So uh, yeah, well, I'll, cut, I'll get you guys back on the camera once this dries. We'll flip it over. I'll show you that process, and we'll uh, we'll keep going with this thing. All right, guys, it's the next day here. As you can see, this stuff is very, very hard, hard as a rock. Um, so now, I'm gonna take this tape off. I'm gonna use the same tape to kind of mask off where I definitely don't wanna be. And that's in, in this uh, bow tie region. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, right there, how that glass filler, some of these holes, these got a little bit to go, but that hole especially, it's almost up to the top. So let me grab some tape. I'm actually gonna double layer. And I'm not gonna even go up to the bow tie. I'm gonna stay a half inch, inch as far as I can away from the bow tie on this initial uh, deal here. And I'll tell you what would even work even better, you just have to be careful to make sure you get it off there quick enough, is like duct tape or something, something that would stand up to, to uh, tools, you know, sand. And if you don't do this stuff often, if you do it often, then you probably got pretty good control of your, your uh, tools. But uh, yeah, if you if you don't aren't used to doing this kind of stuff at all, I would recommend using like a duct tape or a stronger tape right here. So if you do get into it a little bit, it's not gonna uh, just eat right through it. Masking tape's not very strong. It's for masking, for paint. I mean, it's not for really protecting too much, but I mainly put it there to where it's easier to see the yellow tape when you're working than it is just to, you know, to have it all, you know, it just for, for my brain, it works to be able to see the yellow tape and keep me off of there. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the back. I'm gonna take my uh, my whiz wheel and kind of dig. I'm actually gonna dig into this here until I get down to that fiberglass. This here obviously isn't gonna take much and neither will these, but uh, let's get that dug out and then I'll show you what we're gonna do from, uh, from there. Okay, as you can see, well, I don't know if you can or not, but I don't know how hard that is to tell. But I've got fiberglass from the back side. I'm down to that on this side. And there is a little, I mean, it's not super deep, but there's a little pull, uh, pulled up area down here on each one, maybe a 16th of an inch deep. that I'm gonna be able to fill that with that fiberglass, uh, that long hair resin fiberglass to uh, basically it'll connect the backside filler to the top side and this will be a seamless repair and it'll be super strong and it won't ever come back on you so let's get uh, I'm actually gonna do a little bit of sanding you wouldn't have to at this stage necessarily but I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding around each area uh, just for adhesion but ultimately when I sand this back down when I when I fill this and I sand it back down my filler is only gonna come up to the flat part of the grill anyways. And then we'll go with like a skim coat of glazing just to, you know, um, fill my sand scratches from knocking down the, uh, the glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some filler on this and then uh, we'll let that set up for a little while and then we'll come back and uh, finish this thing up. It's just a small piece of 180. I'm gonna scuff around this area. All right, guys. Remember what I was saying earlier about uh, when you're mixing this stuff up, first off, it needs to be really thoroughly mixed. And that's that's the same with anything, whether it's body filler, you know, regular body filler, glazing, primer, paint, clear, it doesn't matter. Uh, take the time, get this stuff mixed up really good. And also, you know, kind of cut some of these, you know, you don't want to cut it, like I said, cut up too fine. You're not going to anyways, but it just makes spreading it out a little bit easier. 
and, and cleaner, easier to deal with. So, and I did mix this up kind of slow because once I fill this, I'm going to be moving on to something else. Uh, I just wanted to get filler on this, and then it can sit pretty much the whole day and uh, cure out. So I'd rather have more working time than to have it kick fast. So, and this could be, you know, if if you're in a rush or whatever, you can add a little more hardener, make it kick faster. Or if you've got plenty of time to let it sit and cure, don't be afraid to put a little bit less hardener in there and it'll just take longer to dry. But you'll have longer work time, so. First up, we're gonna do this one here. Same as before, smash that down in there a little bit to where it'll connect on either end. And also, being that this is the top side, especially when they're close to that bow tie. Trying to lay it out a little bit. I know I know it's tough. This stuff's tough to work with, but. Try to lay it out so it's not as hard to get it back off. Okay, that'll do. Um, get rid of this here. Don't forget as well, if you're taping this to kind of keep where you want to be, this tape has got to come off before this stuff sets up or else you will never get it off after it does set up. So just slowly come in there. Take this tape off. You come in there with your finger, kind of smush that stuff. The cleaner you can get this stuff down, and that's with anything, body filler or whatever, the cleaner you can get this stuff down, the quicker it's gonna sand and the less time you're gonna have Try and do that so if, if i'm bringing in here it'd be hard to bring a applicator in here and smooth this out any better than this because with because of how this material acts but you come in there with your fingers kind of blend that smoother to where you won't have it won't be as tough to, to sand it but that's pretty clean right there all right guys i've got other stuff i've got to do so i'm going to uh, put this aside i'm actually going to set it for my heater so this stuff can really just harden up really good um and and all this work here you wouldn't have to do that if, if you didn't have the uh the license plate bracket like this one did you'd be able to just kind of pick up from where we're going to be here in a minute and sand and paint it but i had to do this and i'm guessing quite a few of you guys have these same holes from over the years but uh Anyways, I'm gonna put this in front of the heater for a couple hours, move on to uh, some of these other things I've gotta do, and then we'll uh, we'll come back to this. All right. Um, I sanded that fiberglass down. Let's see if I can pull you out a little bit, there we go. And then uh, there was a couple low spots, so that's just regular body filler in there. But for the most part, that fiberglass got it down. Uh, but whenever I uh, dug that out, put that fiberglass in there, the idea is digging that out to where whenever you sand it, you can just sand across your your divot and it'll be perfectly flat uh, where you want it. So sanded that down. Like I said, put a little bit of body filler in there just to uh, refine it a little bit better. Didn't take much. You can kind of see the different color. Actually, that one didn't have any, I don't think. But And then after that, all I did was take uh, 180 grit and sanded the whole thing for the primer coat. On this raised bow tie, 
I used it on a block to where it didn't get weird looking on the edges. I protected the edges, you know, with a block and to where, you know, I guess you wouldn't have to use a block, but I would definitely strongly suggest using a block to stay on top of that and keep it flat and crisp. So uh, block that and then uh, 180 grit the whole thing, you know. So now we're going to put some uh, 2K high build primer on it. Actually, first I'm going to do uh, adhesion promoter. I would definitely do that on anything plastic. And also um, this thing's going to see a bunch of uh, bugs and, and debris from being on the front. So that adhesion promoter will definitely help uh, the primer and the paint stick and, and make it, uh, you know, kind of come as one. So uh, we're going to do some adhesion promoter. And then we're going to do our first round of uh, 2K. I will probably uh, primer this two times, two separate times uh, before paint, just because I want it to be really, really nice. You could get away with one coat of primer, no problem. Uh, and I'll, maybe I'll look at, it, at the first coat, and maybe I'll just go with one. But more likely, I'm going to go with two. So uh, either way, let's get going on uh, adhesive promoter and then uh, uh, 2K primer. And also, I've got – these are going to be – the new fenders that are going on the one le as well they've been sitting around they, they come off another car the ones i had here were better than the ones that came with the car um my body work i stripped these down to metal body worked them a long time ago and also uh where the antenna was i welded that up i don't like the antennas on these cars at all on any car really but especially these are right up front and they're ugly so Go to primer. These already have one coat of primer, and as you can see, they're really straight already. Um, and they were saying it with 220. So now I'm going to primer them one more time with this grill, and then uh, those fenders will be ready for wet sand and, and paint so that we can switch them out on the car. But uh, yeah, I've talked enough. Let's get going on uh, these primer coats. Okay, guys, I uh, just now finished wet sanding this with 400. It's looking really, really, really good. Really pumped to see this thing in paint. Um, I did uh, block it and prime it two separate times just for if there was any deep scratches or anything that were going to shrink. I want to do this once and uh, forget about it and not have to worry about it again. So it was primed twice and then uh, blocked, and then this here's wet sanded with 400, and it is very slick, and it looks really good. So uh, I'm going to get this thing dried off, wiped down, and uh, we'll start uh, painting. Okay, guys, I sprayed my red. Um, this has been drying for about a half hour now, so I'm going to tape it. Um, I spray the red first. If, if it's not obvious, I spray the red first because... Uh, there's a lot less masking. I can spray the red, just mask off the very top of the bow tie, paint all my black, and then uh, peel the tape and clear it. So if you were to do, you know, the black first, you'd have to mask everything off. So it just makes sense to spray the red, then you can tape off the uh, the bow tie, and then uh, we'll spray the black, and then uh, clear coat. So I'm gonna mask this up, uh, spray the black, and then I'll uh, bring you guys back on before I clear it. All right, guys getting her done uh so i sprayed that red as you've seen i masked it off with a quarter inch fine line is the perfect size to uh, just do it in one shot take the whole thing up come back with the razor blade and cut it as you can tell it looks really clean really nice lines uh i'm just letting this base coat this black base coat cure out for probably about another 15 minutes it's been down for about 15 now so i'm gonna give it another 15 to let everything kind of 
you know tack up real well and then uh we're gonna clear coat it and we'll be uh we'll be done with this project and we can get it back in the car and uh start getting motivated on the rest of it all right guys here's the finished product little clear coat and all that stuff this is three coats of high solids clear uh it buried that paint line just perfect in there it really looks awesome really shiny this camera actually doesn't do it justice just how how shiny it is uh but yeah real happy with that um this kind of concludes that that grill on this car at least i'm sure we'll have another one eventually to do on a different car but for now we're done with the grill on this one and uh it's gonna be time to uh move on to the next project with it all right guys so in this episode here on the one le um we got this grill finished up um time to switch gears and work on yet another car until i get some more time for this i think in the next video i'm going to start tackling some of these small pieces like this uh these uh blisters i'm going to make them functional which i've always wanted to do on one of these cars never got around to doing it but i'm going to make these here functional and uh, i'm going to mess with maybe some ground effect pieces and spoilers stuff like that that i can be working on while the car's still together not all blown apart um so uh I really appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, I said before, uh, really, you know, like people watching, it keeps me motivated to come in here. I'm by myself here. Uh, so gets me up, gets me looking forward to coming in and working and making content and stuff like that. So if you guys are liking it, uh, like, comment, subscribe, any comments, pretty, pretty cool to uh, interact with you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely subscribe. Um, and we'll, we'll keep putting them out. Uh, get the boys up here, getting some work done and, uh, We'll keep uh, putting videos out, and uh, yeah, I ramble on enough. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.